Alright, so like before we get started with this whole video thing, all I want to do is fill up this back tire so the tire is actually inflated. This is the EBW80 by the way, my electric dirt bike that's been taken apart. I need to clean it and I'm just going to put it all back together. But the stupid tire is killing me. Now, the bead is like too far from the rim so I just can't simply fill it with air. So, I've seen people use this stuff. I guess let's give it a try. Maybe it's not like explosive enough. I think this is what we need to do. Is that a good mix? God! But no! Alright, let's start putting a strap around the car. That's how it's done, people. All right, but guys, don't try that at home. It was straight up sketchy. I mean, it, it got the job done, but it was sketchy. But you're not here for that because we are on episode eight of this mini off road gas to electric go kart conversion video we got going on here. And we got a lot of work to do, so let's just jump into it. But if you guys remember in episode seven, last week's episode, we made a list. There were five things on this list, but by the end of the episode, there were only three things. So the two things that were missing off the list were the foot throttle and the foot brake, which we got here. I finished them off camera. So here they are. Here's the throttle. All I did was make this little triangle bracket on the bottom and I mounted the electric foot throttle onto it. And here's the cable that's going to end up going to our speed control. So that takes care of the throttle. As far as the foot brake goes, I use a door hinge. I use a spring to return the pedal back. I put a stopper down here so it can't go any further than this, but it goes up and down. Here's your cable. Here's your cable adjuster. And what all this goes to is this very cheesy caliper we got back here. And when I say cheesy, I mean cheesy. This thing is terrible. I'm going to end up replacing it with a hydraulic rear brake caliper in the future but we'll save that for a different video this is just the extra cable i gotta cut but that thing sucks it barely stops the go-kart but it'll do the job for now as far as testing it when we get the motor on it but for everything else that we have to get done in this video it's up on this table so let's just break it down to the battery box what we have to do first is we're gonna use this big anderson plug and basically just gonna take our negative and our positive put these giant lugs on them put the lugs in the plug this way we can connect and disconnect the whole battery box so we can take the battery box out of the go-kart and its own little unit and then on the other side of the anderson plug we got these two big power cables i'm just gonna crimp the lugs on the end of these and those are gonna go to the electric speed control but first, check this out. They're all fully charged. That means we're gonna test drive this thing real soon. So just stick around guys. But now we're able to take the power from our battery box through this massive Anderson plug that works swiftly to the end of these cables to our speed control. But it leaves us to our next step. How are we gonna mount this speed control to the go-kart? I made this plate, so let's go weld it. So I ended up sticking the speed control on the right side of the go-kart because we have the motor on the left side already. And I was also limited to the length of the phase wires coming out of the motor. So this is the furthest I can put it. So that's where it's going to stay. This is what I mean by being limited by the phase wires. So it's just going to be what it is. Also, check this out. I made the support brackets for our motor mount off camera. Oh, also, we have a chain and drive. Let's hook up the phase wires to the speed control. If we put this positive and negative cable to our speed control, 
and put all our batteries in the battery box just like so technically we can all see right, so we if the motor actually works to the anderson plug going to the speed control i also wired up the foot throttle so all that leaves us with is i don't have the key yet so i'm gonna use this little jumper wire as a key so let's turn it on and i guess we'll see what happens so far, it's all good. All right. What the? I did not even consider that as an option for something to happen. What? What the heck? All right. That's fine. I'm sending this thing full speed reverse. Let's move forwards and let's mount the battery to the go-kart. As far as actually mounting that battery box to the go-kart, I don't really have an idea yet. If I did have an idea, I would have done this in last episode. So from this point on, we're kind of winging it, but let's mock it back up on the go-kart. Just like this. It's such a tight fit. Let's put the ratchet strap on it. I'm getting good at this. Check it out. It's in the go-kart. Now we just gotta find a way to keep it up there, even though I probably could test it like this. But I'll spend a little time and try to mount it. If I can't figure something out, let's go ride it like this. So after staring at it for about an hour, this is what I came up with. Basically, it's just these two angle lines and four little stubby things that I welded to the frame and the screws go into there. But how I made it was I cut four stubby things, little one by one inch square pipe, cut four of them. Then I cut two angle lines, which I'm gonna use to hold the box in. Then I welded the nuts into the little one by one square stubby thingies. So it got the bolt and the nut in there. Then I drilled holes in the angle line, and now we got this thing back to where we started. So this is the angle line. There are the stubby things. Here are the bolts, the holes on the angle line. And it just kind of does one of these things. And you just screw it in all the way, and it'll lock it in. And there's two of them, so it holds it into place. So I think that's pretty good. So now we got the battery box mounted to the go-kart. What we have left is to figure out that reverse situation. Actually found the problem. There's a little tag on the wire that said reverse, which is these two wires. And I think if I connect them, it will put the go-kart in the other direction so it will drive forwards, but I'm not 100% sure. So. Let's take our temporary little key jumper, let's power up the go-kart. Let's go tap on the gas and see what happens. All right, so that definitely fixed it. That was what you have to do. You have to put that in the other way now. Eventually, I'm gonna have that on a little switch up on a little dashboard I'm gonna make so we can go forwards or reverse. But for now, I really wanna go test this thing mainly to see if it actually even handles and works and if the brakes work but also to see how this motor handles because this is not the final drive gear ratio that i'm gonna actually have on the go-kart when it's all said and done right now i have a 50 tooth gear on the axle and an 11 tooth gear on my motor which is nowhere near where i want it because that's gonna mean that the top speed on the go-kart is gonna be like 20 miles an hour and that's not what I want. But for testing reasons, it shouldn't put too much load on the motor and I can kind of get an idea of how everything kind of acts and if it's gonna have enough torque to even turn my other sprocket. So that's basically what I wanna go test right now. So let's just go Hop in the truck and boom, just like that, we are in an unexclosed location. Some of you might know this area from my street go-kart kill test video. 
But uh, for everybody else that doesn't know, I'm not saying this location, keeping it top secret. Now, I kind of got too excited and I put the thing on the trailer and I forgot to check some of the important stuff like tire pressure. I noticed they're low. So before we get out there and test this thing, let's put some air in the tires. Air the tires, let's pull it out. Now, honestly, it's heavy, but it's not insanely heavy. I mean, it's pretty easy to like. Who am I kidding, y'all? That thing is pretty heavy. So, before we hop on it and try it for the first time, there's a couple things we need to remember. Not only is that gear ratio not my final drive and not what it's going to be but also the speed control is in its factory settings still so i have yet to program or change the acceleration curve or anything fancy like that so say you were to buy this brushless dc motor from golden motor this is the way it's going to come this is what it's going to feel like i don't really know what it's going to feel like but you guys are going to experience it just as fast as I am so with that being said let's hop on it and see what actually happens oh my god okay oh it works all right we're taking it slow at first let's see how the steering works we got left oh we got a little speed we got right all right let's just let's just get into it so from a dead stop, let's see what it does. Ready, set. So with that being said, we're bringing episode 8 to an end. I know you guys probably have so many more questions about this thing, but we're not even done yet. We still got to do the cooling system and all that other stuff. So this was just a little teaser showing that it does work. We're getting somewhere and it is fast. It might not look like it in the camera, but wait until I got some other angles and we do some other stuff to it. It's going to be a little unsafe I kind of like did I wear out the tires that much already but guys please subscribe please like and hit that notification button because episode 9 is coming out and I, I don't even know what to say the thing's amazing it's like a little rocket ship I just built something super dangerous especially if you were to put a little kid on this it's not it can't it's not recommended so I'll see you guys on the next one. Please subscribe. See you later.